Of course, I have to listen to some of the amazing introduction music for Auto Blame for a brief moment here. But now we're going to move on to the agony of defeat, literally and figuratively, for Amiga. We're talking about the great, veritable shmup game called Agony on Amiga. It is one of the more difficult and troublesome pesky games to run on the Amiga cores on our lower spec NES, SNES, and of course PlayStation Classic Hardwares. And uh, the game kind of reminds me of a great shmup in the vein of the Clash of the Titans original movie. I'm also a fan of the remake movie and of the follow-up called Wrath of the Titans. But we're going to load it on the PUAE core that is in the current release right now. And you're going to see exactly how it runs. And some of the cores such as 3DO, Sega Saturn, and uh, so on do not work well because they do not have... Inter implementation of dynamic recompiler and we definitely need dynamic recompiler to run these games better uh, But PlayStation Rearm Neon on the other hand has dynamic recompiler if you want to see exactly what I'm talking about Try going into the core options and disabling the option for dynamic recompiler and You're gonna be running games pretty much like this game right here is about to run and of course the Sega Saturn uh, 3DO Virtual Jaguar and so on and I'm a big, big uh, mythology fan. I love mythology movies, books, TV shows, cartoons, anything you name it. Even when I went to school and they were studying Shakespeare, my uh, teacher happened to be a college professor who taught mythology. And I was very, very intrigued and interested in mythology. And she let me take some of the curriculum for college and gave me some uh, credits towards college, which was awesome. But look how this game runs right now. This is pretty bad. Is a thorn in my side not be able to run this well. But there's a tremendous Amiga update uh, thanks to Soninos and RSN8887. They're both huge Commodore uh, fans and they helped out with Amiga and Vice. And uh, the Vice keyboard is completely fixed for the Vice X64 core. And uh, this game right here, see how it runs? This is the first example. I'm going to give you one more example. And I'm a big, big fan of games like Rastin and so on. I mean, of side-scrolling hack and slash games. And I'm going to load one of them up right now. And you're going to see uh, a pure example of the way it runs on the old setup. So we're going to load this game called Lionheart. Nothing to do with the uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, which is a great uh, underground Fight Club style movie. But we're going to load that up right now with the same core. These are two premier examples of games that would typically run on advanced gra uh, graphics architecture or more uh, perimeters and such. And it's not going to run all too well. You'll see what I mean. But I'm a big fan of games, like I said, like Rastin, Legendary Axe, and so on. And there are actually three Rastin games in the arcade. They're all amazing games. So we're checking this out for a brief moment here. And we're going to see how Lionheart runs. And no, there are no grist appearances by Jean-Claude Van Damme, unfortunately. But I'm going to have to dig up that movie again. This game kind of reminds me of the original Thundercats game that happened to be on the ZX Spectrum. I really love that game. It reminds me of playing like a Tiger handheld electronic game. But uh, we're going to check this out for a brief moment here. Start game. And you're going to know what I mean when I start playing this here. This has some graphical glitches and an uh, incredible, troublesome slowdown. But we're going to be playing it with a fixed up core, which is going to go out in the very, very next release. And you're going to see both Agony as well as this running much, much better. See the graphical glitches and how slow this runs? This is pretty bad. This is kind of cool. You have to actually pull your sword out by holding the uh, button and then uh, tapping left to right to do the swing. This is kind of cool the way the controls work. But you can tell this game wants to be cool and just can't with our limited... Uh, uh, CPU power on the Mini Classic, but right now, uh, we're going to load Agony up again. And uh, we're going to do it in a very special way. We're going to load it with the updated PUAE Extreme Core, which is going to go out in the very next update. And you're going to see a tremendous difference. And this is a game that I've wanted to run forever. I've done so much countless weekend. And uh, you were able to use the custom UAE configuration files to do a little bit of tweaking to run it better. And QCart was great and tremendous in helping out with that. But now we're going to be able to run it automatically with the update. It's going to run much better on the PlayStation Classic, of course. But you're going to get a uh, different enough uh, performance and speed boost to be able to enjoy it more thoroughly on, of course, the NES and SNES Classic as well. And I'll have some release notes on this. Again, uh, thanks... Sonic Nose and of course RSN 8887. 
there are other updates too related to some of the other computer cores like Scum VM. I showcased the update for that and I showed you that you have to go into the Scum VM menu. Uh, start menu to exit the game. You're not going to need to do that anymore. HH Romic did a great fix so that the core can gracefully exit from Retroarch. So you're going to be able to exit that just fine. But here we go. Enjoy. Turbo fire mode activate. Full speed mode activate. And now we have great music. Unlike UAE uh, for ARM. This is incredible. We're going to try to get to the first stage here. And then, of course, we're going to try to Lionheart next. But yes, you can actually enjoy Agony and not be defeated by the slowdown, and uh, this is an incredible game. Now I'm going to have to watch the original Clash of the Titans, and of course the updated uh, retelling of it, reboot, which was pretty fun, and Wrath of the Titans, and I'm also uh, a fan of the Jim Henson Storytelling Show, which actually had a whole season devoted to mythology. It was actually pretty damn cool. And there's another bonus feature here. You might remember uh, way, way back when... Uh, FR500 actually uh, helped out with in implementing uh, keyboard to controller mapping. Uh, these guys uh, actually got the same thing introduced for the Amiga course. If you go into the control options, you can do it the same way you can do it for the uh, blue MSX, F MSX, and of course the other PC course now. So if you have any uh, controls for say the Amiga games, you can uh, just go into core options right here. Controls. And it has everything that you can map to the keyboard. If you change it uh, right here, just watch. If I go to RetroPad, change it to keyboard, and back out and go back in, it's going to change everything so I can map the keyboard keys to the controller. But right now I'm just playing with the joystick because I'm fine with the default controls. But I'll link to my video in the description of exactly what I'm talking about. But yes, you're able to, with uh, the PC course, actually map all of them. Nearly each and every one of them from the CX Spectrum one, which is called Fuse. The CPC Armstrong ones, and, the, and so on. Uh, map the keys to the keyboard from the controller, you know what I mean. I flubbed that a little bit, but I mean the keyboard to the controller. When I first approached R-Type and FR500 about this, they kind of jokingly said that we really do not need this because you can choose a keyboard. But I'm like on the NES and SNES Classics, we don't have a keyboard. And at the time, we didn't actually have a keyboard. So uh, R-Type hopped out with it, uh, a, a starter uh, keyboard mapping thing. And then FR500 completed it, got it into the RetroArch update, and we never looked back since. And this is absolutely necessary to be able to run Metal Gear uh, MSX2 games. And I'm going to do another thing uh, that Pat actually asked me about. He was having a little bit of uh, interest in getting the DOS box going. I'm actually going to do a mapper. And again, I'm going to show you this in the uh, controls. You can actually set the controls, and right here, it's actually going to be load remap. I'm going to have the setup for the DOS box SVN core, and you're going to be able to load so you can play games with default controls, kind of like I'm running right now with Agony. But let's see if I can get past this first boss before it try the non jean Van Damme Lionheart game. But yes, we're running AGA games, advanced graphics architecture games, at literally nearly full speed ahead. And uh, with this update, you're also going to be able to run uh, games like Shadow of the Beast on the SNES Classic with uh, less nigh of a hint of stutter. So definitely try out the games you've been running before in a whole new way. I'm hoping I can take out this boss here. I have a feeling I'm going to be taken down though. But again, I'm going to call this either the Agony of Defeat, aka Clash of the Titans. Okay, I got taken out by the boss, but let's see if we can do this. I'm taking on a, a demonic, crazy, Echo the Dolphin style character here. And the one thing about playing uh, this game in slow motion mode activate without dynamic recompiler was you're actually able to react better and more accordingly to, of course, the enemies and on-screen action and shenanigans. And this made games like Gradius 3, which ran on the actual hardware slow as molasses, much easier to tolerate compared to the arcade version of Gradius 3, which was incredibly difficult and nearly impossible to beat. And the other thing is you can actually get power-ups in this game too, which is really, really incredibly cool, and I'd have to say, along with this, my other favorite game for the Amiga shmup wise is Apidia. And I'm going to include an M3U file to make it run the ADF files easy in the update, and you're also going to have another thing too, which I'm going to show you, and uh, another follow-up Amiga inter uh, tutorial video as far as adding these Amiga games for the NES and SNES classic, because you have to add them in a special way. Very, very cool cinema there. Oh, this is awesome. Waterfalls. 
nothing to do with TLC either. This music is very, very epic. Got some great incidental music going on here. Awesome. So now we're going to try out the Lionheart game. And I'm a big, big hug. I give big crud to Sonino's and RSN 8887. You guys are great. I'm very, very happy you're working with the Vice X64 core and, of course, the Amiga core now. This is beautiful indeed. But now, right now, we're going to load up the uh, Lionheart game. And we're going to load it with the PUAE Extreme core. And I talked to Sunday knows at 8887 about some of the tweaks that I really want to have implemented based on the structure, integrity of the original UAE configuration files. And uh, he kind of felt he didn't want to have anything invested that would affect the overall playability of the games for, you know, be forced upon the higher spec PC users. So I did some of the changes on our end for the mini classic users, the NES, SNES, and PlayStation Classic. And you can actually push the R1 button to get up the uh, LED display there. And L1 for a beautiful keyboard, which is completely reworked. This is awesome. Way, way better than the old keyboard. And let's try this game out. And this music is epic. The graphical glitches are fixed up, the memory issues are accounted for, and without dynamic recompiler, this is still tremendously amazing. Okay, here we go. And I should be posting this update uh, on 9-3-19, which would be Tuesday. But enjoy the music and this great, great uh, game, which reminds me of Thundercats, Rust, and, and, and Legendary Ash, and so on. So much better. Actually playable now. Also reminds me of a typical Masters of the Universe He-Man game. I wish they made a pretty decent one on the Game Boy Advance called Masters of the Universe. And I forgot, I actually have to hold the button down and tap left to right to swing, so it's almost like, like an early uh, archaic Wii Controls configuration. Kind of reminds me of uh, some of the groundwork for the great game Act Razor. And if you ever played Act Razor, you might remember the RPG uh, Sim City style levels. If you play the European version of it, you can actually bypass those completely. And not only that, have a difficulty level select, which is awesome. So play the European version if you ever want to be able to bypass those stages. I remember when I got uh, both that game and Legacy of Kane, uh, the original Blood Omen game, they both said on the boxes themselves that they were good for hours of gameplay, like 30 plus hours. I beat both games really, really fast, so it's kind of disappointing. This is awesome. Great animation, music is kick ass. Very, very surreal, and definitely a tremendous difference between playing it on, of course, the original PUA core, which we've had for a while now. <laughs> that great music here. Almost sounds like a ther uh, theremin in the background. I always thought it'd be pretty fun to actually own a theremin, but they're pretty expensive. I do remember when they had them in the show Big Bang Theory. Oh, and speaking of Thundercats, notice how I just died there. Watch this. Watch how I die. I'll die on purpose, just so you can see. There we go. Bam. The way you disappear, I'm going to load one more game right now. I am actually going to run the Amiga version of Thundercats. And you can see that there's definitely a little bit of a semblance of similarities between Lionheart and the Thundercats game. I believe the Thundercats game actually came out before that, though. I do really, really like the uh, ZX Spectrum version because, again, it reminds me of a colorized uh, Tiger handheld electronics game. And I'm a big, big fan of all the Tiger handheld electronics games. I really, really love to be able to run those on the mini, but of course we need uh, emu and lack uh, uh, dependencies to be able to run those games. But you can run them on PC at least. This is a one-hit kill game. You die very, very easily in this game. Bam! I died the same way I did in the other game. <laughs> That's funny. They have classic guitar style sound effects. Again, I, I'd have to say I like the updated uh, Nintendo DS version of this, as well as the open board version, uh, and of course, the ZX Spectrum version. I like all these versions. 
too bad we didn't have a game like this on Super Nintendo or Nintendo. This would have been incredible. But oh, we got a little one other game, and uh, we're going to see another game that runs awesome with the update. Uh, Chaos Engine, which is also on the Mega Drive. And this will be our final game that we load, most likely. We're going to load uh, Chaos Engine. We're going to load it on PUA Extreme. Again, this game also ran incredibly slow. It is a great two-player mode to activate. And by the way, two-player mode to activate is included with this core update. And the mouse is working just fine with the mouse games. So check out Super Hang On with a mouse. It runs so awesome. It is so incredibly cool being able to play a racing game with a mouse. Kind of like when you're in the arcade on the real hardware for Hang On. And you actually were able to lean left and right. It feels that way with the mouse. It is so awesome. Just like when you had the trackball for Marble Madness. That was awesome as well. But this is another game that runs incredibly slow on the normal architecture. It requires AGA. Uh, now I'm going to show you something about AGA here. You'll see what I mean in a moment once I'm done playing this game. Okay, let's get the show on the road. Watch how fast this runs. And we have a two-player mode activated. So grab another controller and enjoy this incredibly awesome game. Like a little bit of a total carnage, uh, uh, Super Smash TV and so on. I love these style midway games. Again, with a main 2003 stream, you're gonna have quite a midway bally, Atari Vector, and so on uh, update. You're gonna have uh, over 125 games that are gonna be working great. And not only that, you're gonna be able to run main 2003 stream on any platform, no matter what it is now, because uh, everything's fixed up for our retro Arcade stream, so we can only run main 2003 stream properly on our platforms, but now if you're on, say, uh, RetroPie, you can compile and run all the games on that platform as well, which is awesome. But I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'm going to load up one more thing real quick, give you a little bit of a tidbit here. Again, I'm going to do this in a tutorial, dummy. And if you're on the PlayStation Classic in particular, and you have an AGA or an advanced graphic architecture game such as Aladdin, if you put uh, the parentheses here, and run AGA in the title, it's actually going to automatically use the A1200 uh, chipset. So that's how you're going to have to do it. Otherwise, you're going to get an error message. And the error message would uh, pretty much show that you do not have enough uh, CPU to run it. I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to go to this test here. We're going to try to load a LAN in without the AGA. And it's going to give me an error message. But by putting the parentheses and AGA in it, it's going to subjugate it into the architecture I need. Right here. It needs at least a 6802 uh, <laughs> 020 CPU. So what I'm going to do right now is go back to load the game. And we're going to go back to uh, the Aladdin that I have with AGA in parentheses here. And you can do it in the M3U as well. And again, I'm going to do an updated tutorial on this, but I'm going to load it. And it's going to automatically use the A1200 architecture. And this is also one of the other very, very difficult to run games that runs even a little bit, tad bit slow on this update. But uh, it is what it is, the best we can do. I like the Genesis version. I like the Super Nintendo version of Aladdin. But this game, uh, Mad Monkey told me about this game. And it's pretty bad, funny bad. Because when you get into the game, it actually has a vocal uh, interpretation of the whole new world song which is just way out of place there and very surreal for the game but you see the game for itself here for a brief brief moment this is probably the most difficult game that i've run into the run it requires the most text and uh, perimeter changes but luckily we have agony and lightheart running great but here we go we're gonna try to run uh, this game and this game runs so awful on the original core you have no idea how bad it runs I'm almost afraid to start because it'll probably take two minutes to even get like across the screen with how bad it runs. But here it is actually running pretty decently. But yes, if you play this game far enough, you're actually going to be able to hear a whole new world if you ever like that song. I'm not really a really big fan of the song, but I do find it funny and entertaining in a silly fashion to have it come up in a game with vocals. But I hope you enjoyed the video and the update will go out Tuesday. Again, thank you Saninos and RSN887. You guys are incredible. I'm looking forward to the future updates. And I'm really hoping we can get Dynamic Recompiler integrated so we can have the full glorious Amiga emulation as we deserve on our mini platforms. Come on, dude. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey.
Come on, dude. Hey. Come on. Come on. He's running out of steam. Your turn. Puppy. Come on, Pop-Tarts. Come on, buddy. Come on, big guy. Oh, it's your big buddy. Oh, my buddy. Hey. Come here, dude. Come on. Hey. Come on.